Hey everybody, it's Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and we are going into the darkness and horror of Harrow County, the game of Gothic Conflict. And disclaimer that I got a review copy of this one. I'm going to do a full playthrough of the solo mode for this one, and then I'll give my thoughts at the end of the video on the solo mode and the competitive gameplay overall. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos every month you can't see anywhere else. You can also listen to our podcast for reviews and design discussions, or join the conversation and come say hi on our Discord. So Harrow County is primarily a competitive game for two to three players, each controlling a different asymmetric faction, uh, moving around this board with their figures, and trying to complete different objectives and fight each other to gain victory points. But the solo mode puts you in control of the fourth faction in the game, Hester, which is like this uh, witch who died, but she got reincarnated into one of the other faction's leaders, but she's also still kind of alive, and she controls the plants, and she can put uh, little snaky snakes in uh, people's ears to mind control them, and she's just trying to sort of burn everything down and control the world. So yeah, lovely person to control, but that is the uh, only faction you control in solo, and you basically face two simplified uh, versions of the other factions, so you're sort of uh, playing them against each other and stuff. So this will be a bit of a more complicated playthrough because I'm going to try to sort of tell you a bit about how the factions we're facing off against would normally play, and then I'll show you the actual gameplay of Hester. So the two factions we play against, the blue and red ones here, are the family and the protectors. The family is a group of related kind of like demons slash witches slash bad juju magic folks. And uh, the protectors are trying to protect the city or not the city, the town in like Harrow County and the regular people from them. And these are the two most basic factions, the one that you kind of learn the game through. But again, as Hester, I'll be coming in with my enchanted vines and trying to control them and do terrible things to them. But their victory goal, and this is the same as in the competitive play, is to get to seven victory points first. And they primarily do that by destroying each other's units. When they destroy one unit, they'll get one victory point, and then this little spoon ticks up. Now they got to destroy two units for another victory point. Then the spoon goes to three, and now they got to destroy three units for another victory point for the rest of the game. So that's uh, how they can get points through destroying things. But then additionally, the protectors are going to be putting out villagers they want to rescue, and the family's going to be putting out uh, little houses they want to blow up. And for each of these that the faction reaches, they'll get two more victory points. It's a bit more complicated how they actually rescue or destroy them in the full game. But in this game, they just need to literally move a unit into those places to get uh, two victory points. And again, when they get to seven, that's game over for me because they've won. Whereas Hester, a bit more complicated. This is, the, again, the last faction they teach you in the game. So it's kind of the weirdest. So yeah, first of all, she's going to be infesting uh, the haints, like the units, with these little snaky snakes that go right in their earlobes there. Lovely, kind of like, uh, was it, Wrath of Khan, where they put the little bugs in their brains to control them. And if Hester can get a blue haint and a red haint in the same space together, both with uh, snakes in their ears, then she gets to put down one of her bonfires, which actually gives her more actions for the rest of the game. So she starts out with only one action a turn, then she gets two with her first bonfire, three with her second bonfire. And additionally, whenever she makes a bonfire, she gets to put both of those haints that fell in love with uh, snakies uh, <laughs> on one of these six spaces. And when she fills all six of these spaces, she wins the game. The other way she can fill these six spaces is if she gets on the map, which requires her to have some bonfires already down and then like spend cubes to basically summon herself back into existence. Then if she can end her turn on the same space as a legend, these are the leaders of the other factions, she gets to uh, put one of these wild tokens onto one of the spaces, the one corresponding to their faction. So we'll have blue for the left and red on the right. So yeah, by making bonfires and sucking the souls of uh, the legend leaders of the other factions, she can try to win before they get the seven victory points. There's also some cube-based combat. We start with some random cubes. I'm playing on the medium difficulty here, so not the easiest and not the hardest, which means I start with two of my cubes. My cubes are every color that's not red and blue, <laughs> so I uh, randomly got green and yellow. Those are going to correspond to the color of the different terrain tiles on the map. You have green forests, yellow fields, brown, I think it's like mud or swamp, and blue, I think is wetlands. And then you've also got this special space called the bramble in the middle. Anytime a blue or red unit ends the turn there, they're going to score another victory point for their faction. So that's another way they can run away with things. And you also have these mountains that are a little bit harder to move into, although not really in the solo game, only in the competitive game. 
and that also let you attack at farther range, because normally you can attack at up to two range, mountains let you attack at three. And combat's also handled with these cubes, and you drop them in the mur, 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 dice tower internal in the game box. This is similar to the uh, tower in games like Wallenstein and Shogun, where you would uh, drop cubes into a little tower like this, but not all of them would come out. They would be like waiting in there for the next combat you had. So same system here. It's a lot of fun. But uh, let's stop the preamble. I'll explain kind of how a turn actually runs by just getting into it. So first, at the beginning of each solo turn, you need to make sure that there is one building and one villager, one townsfolk, on the map. Because the AI factions need to have something to go for. They'll be consistently moving towards these. So to determine that, I'm going to draw from one of these three decks. And these are the decks of cards for the other three factions in the game. Uh, Hester has her own cards, I'll show you in a second. But in the solo mode, they also have some icons and numbers on the bottom of the card that will control the AI actions and such. And you'll see these colors, red, purple, and blue, correspond to this little uh, identification key for the map. This tells me what kind of hexes I might get. If I pick a red card, I know it's going to be on the far exterior sides of the map. If I pick a purple, it's going to be on sort of the top and bottom. And if I pick a blue, it's going to be on the interior. And you'll be drawing cards to activate the enemies on their turn and lots of other stuff. So you do get a little bit of control and expectation by picking which uh, cards to draw. Also, at the beginning of the game and setup, you get to pick how many you want of each color. Now, I went for a balanced uh, distribution, and the number of cards depends on the difficulty settings. So I think I have, what is it, 14 cards? Although I'm going to draw two of them immediately to place out the, uh, <laughs> the villager and the town. So, um... Whoops, I just realized I'm supposed to have it like that. There we go. So now, no, I got that backwards. Blues over on the left and reds on the right. Okay. So to start out for this placement, I think I'm going to go for red for each because uh, generally the hex choices will give you like one on both sides that are kind of opposite each other. So by me picking red, I should be able to get maximum distance for them to travel. So we'll say this is for the blue and I can put it in the four or 34 hex, uh, which would be. Uh, the uh, all the way top right or all the way bottom left. That's not a hard choice because this is only three moves away and that's more than three. So there we go. That's their first uh, goal to get to. And again, that'll get them two victory points. And I'll do another red for the uh, other people, 15 or 23, which is here or here. That seems like a terrible idea. So let's go there. <laughs> all right, so now we're ready to start our first turn. But our turn always starts with an activation of one of the two enemy factions. And what we do is we pick which faction we want to activate, then we pick which deck we want to draw from, and then we do the stuff that it says on there. And you're free to activate the same faction over and over again, or to like mix and match as you choose. Right now, uh, it looks like red might have a little bit of a harder time getting where they're going. So let's choose red, and let's do a purple card. We got a lot of those. So how does this work? All we're looking at is this icon in the bottom left, and these icons and numbers in the bottom right. And let's do it one by one. So first, the AI checks how many actions I have. I start with one bonfire token, one action per turn at the beginning of the game. Whenever I summon a new bonfire, I'll get another action token that can never be taken away. Like the uh, AI can kill my bonfires. They'll actually go on the board as basically like little units. But I uh, still get to keep the extra action. So every bonfire I put out will be a permanent upgrade for me. But yeah, so they take the number of bonfire action tokens I have. And they start by putting them on the indicated icon out of these three. This is uh, putting combat cubes in to help with fights, uh, spawning more haints, more units, and moving those units. So they're going to put this on the movement one. If I had more bonfires, they would continue in the indicated direction. So I'd do one there if I had two, then I'd do one there if I had three. And these are extra activations. These fires are for these actions. They always get one of each plus one per bonfire. So basically they're going to move twice, then do one combat cube, then spawn one haint. And they always start with the one that the card indicated, in this case, the movement. So let's go through each of these because these are the core uh, actions of the units. So they are moving twice because of the bonfire. They will move every single unit they have on the board as groups, keeping them together. So here they've got their legend and three haints, and they want to move two spaces towards here. 
Now, people cannot move into spaces that have the opposing figures in them. So like these guys would block them. They also can't move into spaces with the other person's goal uh, tokens, like the towns and villagers. So here with two, I could basically go boom, boom, or boom, boom. I don't want them to go there because that's going to get them those free bramble victory points. So let's have them go there with their two movement. And that's it. They don't have anybody else to move. Next, I'm going to put one cube in that little combat tray, plus one more per bonfire there, so just one here. And each faction starts with three, so now red's got four. And then I'm going to spawn a new haint, and I can freely distribute them between these hexes, in this case, six and 32, but they must go on hexes that don't have anybody on them yet. And if both those hexes were full, I'd actually have to draw another card to spawn, which would speed up the end of the game, because when these cards run out, I don't know if I said this, <laughs> if these cards run out, I lose also. So six and 32, let's see. Six would put them right here. 32 would kind of consolidate their presence. I like red and blue being closer to each other because I need to, uh, remember, infest their brains with snakes and then get them to uh, go into each other's hexes. So, yeah, I'm going to put that one there. It is closer to the villager, but she's already close to the villager and these guys are in the way and then they can attack him if they want to. So I think it's pretty safe. And then the final part of a turn is them attacking. They will try to make one attack if they can. And this is where this little H comes in. If there's an H, they'll try to attack me, preferring first to attack Hester herself if she's actually out. And if they can't attack her, try to attack one of the bonfires I've spawned. But if there isn't an H or there are none of my units in range, which currently there aren't, and remember range is two spaces or three if you're standing on a mountain, they will instead try to attack someone from the other faction, but only if they have at least as many units as the other faction. Each haint is a unit and the legends are a unit. So if she had been within two range or on a mountain, she could have attacked them because they have four units and they have four units and they want to at least equal. But uh, this solitary guy will not choose to attack them. Now, know that that restriction does not apply when they're attacking me. They will bring, you know, a single dude into a fight, even if I have like <laughs> 50 uh, units of bonfires in one space. They don't care. They're going to try to kill me anyway. So long story short, no battle happens here. Let's get to my first turn and explain how that goes. And then you'll know most of the rules and it'll go a lot more smoothly. So I take the bonfire tokens that I use on the little solo board and now I get to actually place them on actions and I get one action per token. Let's go through our options. So first one up here, and these are all once per turn, all these ones in the top row. This lets me play a card. I started with four randomly from my deck. And when I fill in certain of these victory spaces, I'll get more. And these cards will go in one of these three stacks. And I say stack because the first three cards I play will stay in play because these are actually powers I can use every single turn for free once they're played. But if I wanted to play a fourth card, I have to cover something up. And now that other card doesn't exist anymore. I can only do the topmost card on the stack. And yeah, these are every turn abilities. White Bowels lets me move infected haints for free. Those are the ones that I put snakes in. Desperate Grass lets me move my roots to get farther around the map. You'll see the roots in a second. Actually, I do have to do the roots before I do my action, but let's keep on explaining. <laughs> uh, Wild Tangle lets me turn one terrain cube into another. Terrain cubes are these colored cubes that match the terrain types in the thing, and those are used to power my abilities. And then finally, Hell's Half Acre lets me get a bunch of terrain cubes if I have a root going into the Brambles or a mountain. But let's pause our explanation of the actions to show you the roots. So Esther has these root tokens. They're going to allow her to exert her influence on people. And they can never be attacked. They're not units. They don't actually go on hexes. They go on the spaces between hexes. And they have to always form a chain, a line from space to space. So they can't like circle back around on each other. You can't have like multiple roots branching in different directions. It has to always be a chain. And you get to place two roots per turn and you alternate colors. So this turn, I'll put down black roots. The next turn, I'll put down brown roots. And then I take up the black roots and you kind of go back and forth like that to keep it uh, chaining forward. And first of all, these roots are going to be what allows me to infect our friends over here by uh, getting the root on them. And additionally, the roots are going to get me those terrain cubes that I use for all my powers. So every hex of terrain that a root is touching after I place them is going to give me a cube. So here I would get one green cube, one brown cube, and one yellow cube, because all of those hexes are being touched by my roots. Now for the first turn, you have to come from outside, so I don't get a cube for this. And we'll go like that, because I do want to maybe uh, think about infecting somebody. So I'm going to get a blue cube and a yellow cube. 
And mine are like these light kind of cyanish blue, different than the uh, family's darker blue. And all of us, each faction is limited to a total of six cubes max at the end of any turn. If we have more than that, we have to take them out. So I'm at four out of six. Okay, now I get to do my one action. So I talked about playing cards. Next option, once per turn also, I can place a third root and get another cube where I connect to. And finally, I can spawn a haint for one of the factions. Uh, you never really want to do that unless they literally have nobody on the board, so you can't infect them to uh, get bonfires and such. So yeah, I'm not even going to talk about that one. Next option is movement. And this one is interesting. You'll see the little uh, circular arrow here. That means that if I spend one action moving, I then unlock the ability until I want to stop to move as many things as I want and can afford. And how it works is I can move an infected haint, one with a snake in their ear, one space to a place that matches the color of the cube I spend. So if I had like this red guy infected and I spent one yellow, I could move them into a yellow space. Alternatively, I can spend two of any cube to move an infected haint into any space, and that's the only way to get them to move on to mountains and brambles. And then finally, if Hester's on the board, I can spend two cubes to move Hester onto the matching terrain, or three cubes to move Hester onto the brambles or the mountains. So that's movement, and again, I can do that as many times as I want, but they have to be infected or me. And the final action, very important, is to try to infect some haints. So how this works is you'll see there's like an arrow down and then a crossed out arrow up because once I decide that I want to potentially spend actions on these things at the bottom, I can no longer spend actions on these things at the top. And what happens when you choose to go in here is you take all of the cubes and you drop them into the tower and you see what comes up and then you can spend the cubes on abilities. So you don't have like 100% predictability. Like I'm not sure if I'm going to get a yellow or a green or a blue here, although yellow is most likely with two of them. But then for actions, you can spend the cubes. For one action, you can do this as many times as you want. Spend a cube matching the terrain of a haint to infect the haint. Put a little snake in their ear, so that's how I get them in my side, so I can move them around and make bonfires and such. Or spend three of any cube to infect any haint. But regardless of how you spend it, you do need to have a root going into their hex. And you can only infect one person per hex. So even if I had like a ton of cubes, I couldn't infect all three of these dudes. Now, alternatively, I can summon myself onto a bonfire space, and that's how I uh, get onto the legends, get onto their leaders, and get those wild tokens, and get closer to winning the game. But to do that, I need to already have bonfires on the board, and you'll see that as three cubes, this has two, and that has one. So the lowest cost I've uncovered is how many cubes it costs, and it has to be three, two, or one cube matching the terrain that the bonfire is on, and then I get summoned onto it and I can move myself in a future turn. And if I can end my turn on a legend, I can get one of the things from him. So big question is, what do I want to do with my one action? Pretty much my only options at the moment are to either infect somebody, to send my roots out farther, or to put down a card. For cards, I would probably want to put out Hell's Half Acre and then try to go through the Brambles or Mountains to get a lot more terrain cubes. Or the one that lets me trade in terrain cubes to get the exact colors I need is pretty nice. And you can use these at any time on your turn before or after any of your actions. You just like tap them or whatever, and then you get to use the ability. And again, they don't go away. White bows to move haints for free is pretty good. Although you see it can't end its movement on or adjacent to a hex with an opposing infected haint. So I can't like run them over to each other and then get them to love each other to uh, <laughs> complete my bonfires. Desperate grasp lets me move my roots, but without getting an extra cube, just to kind of like get them going farther along. I don't really care about that. Well, you know what? Here's what I'm thinking. Just infecting the one haint won't do very much, but there's a good chance that I'll still be able to infect maybe uh, blue and also red next turn. And I think to make that more likely to happen, I'm gonna do wild tangle. So then like after I drop the terrain cubes, I can use this to turn one color into another and make sure I have exactly what I need to infect some people. And to that end, I'll use it before I end my turn. Oh, sorry, that was a play a card. And I'll change a yellow into a brown. That gives me one of each of the four colors. I'm in a pretty uh, safe space to be able to infect some people next turn. Okay, and that's the end of my turn. So now I have to pick a faction to activate again. And I don't want red to get too far along. So let's activate blue and have them uh, kill each other a bit. And let's see, where do I want the blue people to spawn? Maybe another red card to keep them kind of farther away. Maybe a purple card to get in red's way. Sure, let's try purple. Or actually, even blue would be fine. I can just like get right in their face. So what have we got? Uh, they're going to get an extra strength cube for combat. So I'll put that right there. That's going to double activate, and that'll be the first one. And we'll get to the spawn hexes in a second, but it's 25 or 26. So first, they're going to add two strength cubes, one plus one for the fire. Then they're going to spawn in 25 or 26 and then move. 
an interesting 25 is here and 26 is here, so I don't have a choice. But I love blocking them up from their straight path to the uh, the person. That's great. Although, oh crud, I don't block them up because they can just walk right onto the brambles and they're going to score a victory point in a second. Gosh, darn it. That's not good. <laughs> but how about the family? Where do I want them to go? Well, I want them to be able to attack her and not kill that guy because I can infect him more easily. So I guess I can have them go onto the mountains. Ah, this is not what I was hoping for. See, I don't have any good... I was hoping, like, they could go here, and then I could go bloop bloop, and maybe do a double infection. But, uh, it's fine. Let's go to the mountains. Okay, and since they've done all their actions, they can make one attack. And in this case, I could have this one attack, this one, because they at least equal, or this one attack, this one, or them attack them. I'm gonna have them attack them, because I don't want to kill these little off-by-their-own dudes. Uh, they're perfect for infecting. And they can attack, because they have four units, including the legend, and they have four units. Now, when a combat starts, if one side has more units, they get a free cube added before the cubes are dropped. But in this case, they are tied, and I want to do that whenever possible. <laughs> I don't want to make them stronger. So let's show you how combat works. So blues attack in red. I take all the cubes, including mine, just because they might get uh, stuck in the tower over there. And we drop them in, and whoa. Uh, so let's see. Whoa, blue did well here. So blue got four, red got two, and one of mine, my green, got stuck in there. And what you check is whether the attacker got at least as many cubes as the defender. And in this case, they did. Blue has four, red has two. So they can spend two cubes per unit they want to kill, but only until they are no longer equal to or greater than the defender. So here they're going to spend four cubes to kill two of their units, and they are done. Now, if the attacker does not get equal to or greater cubes, let's say that red had a three and they had two, then you can still have what's called a haint clash where each of them individually gets to decide if they want to spend the requisite number of cubes to kill one haint of the other side. And that applies even if the attacker doesn't even have enough cubes to do it. So like here, if they rolled this, not rolled, dropped this, then red could still kill a haint and a haint clash, even though they could not. All right, but anyway, uh, yeah, so they are killing two haints, and that's all she wrote. The red cubes do hang out there, but the blue cubes are back to the blue supply. They take down two of these people. Just to show you how combat victory points work, currently the spoon is pointed at one, so a single defeat. We'll get them one victory point but then the spoon moves to two and now they need two haints killed so they'll save this one and the next time they kill a haint they'll both go away and they'll get two victory points and that's it for their turn didn't go great for me and for my one action gosh darn it well first let's do our uh, roots so we switch it to brown and again they have to go off the end so i could go like there <sighs> i'm trying to say what i want to do here i actually think yeah i think i want to go like this go into the mountain i'm only going to get yellow and blue because the mountain doesn't have a color to gain me any cubes. But then, I think I'm going to play it. another card, I guess. And then I'll try to infest a whole bunch next turn. Okay, so I'm going to do Hell's Half Acre. If I have a root on the brambles or a mountain, I can gain any two terrain cubes. Oh, it's actually going to take me to too many. So I'm going to lose one of these. But what the hell, let's get another green. Okay, and we'll just leave it like that. We would have gotten a second cube, but we'll say that we lost it because we can only have six. And yeah, that'll be the end of my turn. And Stupid Blue is sitting on the Brambles, so they get another victory point. They're at two now. Not good, y'all. Not good. So who do I want to activate? Oh, sorry. My black roots come off. Who do I want to activate now? So I really want to be able to, like, double infect this turn. Um, And I also... Ooh, I want to get rid of the Brambles, guys. So I could activate Blue and let them move. That would get rid of him. Or I could activate Red, and they would probably move in, and then they could attack that guy. Yeah, I think I like that better. And then I might be able to like do a little infection, like boom, boom kind of thing. Maybe infect a red and a blue all at once. Let's try it. So I'm going to activate red. I'll do another blue card. So they're going to get an extra combat uh, cube and spawn in 12 or 13. So they have four in the supply now. They just got two more. That's a lot. Let's see, 12 and 13 are here. I guess I'll put them a little bit farther away from uh, their goal and also kind of block up them. Then they all try to move on the shortest path, so she's going here, sadly. This guy's going here, and this guy's going here. Okay, and then attacking. Um, I could have any of them attack this guy. Ah, oh, man, they're about to hounds folk. What do I want to do here? If she attacks him, then she'll get an extra cube, which I don't really want them to have more cubes. So let's have, like, this guy that's pretty close attack him, and maybe we'll get lucky and get a haint clash, and they can kill each other. Not too likely with red having so many cubes, but maybe possible. Actually, no, I don't think it is possible, because I think uh, blue already had all their cubes out. So hopefully some of mine stay in there, because I don't want to have uh, two, more than six come out. Okay, we did good. We've got four. So we've got even more cubes just hanging out in there. And then red's got four 
which means they can spend the two they need to kill the one guy. So I'll get them off the brambles, but they get a victory point and their spoon moves up. But at least blue is not going to bramble it up again because that uh, brambles bonus, they get every turn whether they activate it or not. So it would have been very bad for us. And right, we're definitely going to infect this time. Heck yes, we are. So let's go there, uh, which would still have us be able to infect either of them. And then uh, maybe back to there to try to <laughs> circle back around on those people. So I'm getting a yellow and a brown, and I am eligible to use my Hell's Half Acre to get two more cubes later. And this time I'm going to use one of these actions, so I'm going to choose to drop the cubes into the tower, which means I can no longer do any of those actions. I am locked in to the bottom row. Here we go! Okay, some reds are hanging out, and I've got some options here. So I can change any cube to another cube, and I can get two more. But first, let's uh, let's do our infections, because that is my action, so I can infect as many times as I want. Well, sorry, not as many times as I want, as many hexes as I have roots in, but only once per hex. All right, so I'm going to do a yellow to get the haint here. His a little snake friend, and I'm spending my cubes just like they do in combat. And then since they're on a mountain, I got to do uh, any three. So what are they more likely to be on next turn? I don't know. Let's uh, keep one blue. Now let me infect this guy. Now I need to move infected haints from both sides into the same space to make a bonfire, but they can't have anybody else with them because they can't occupy the same space otherwise. So I'll have to do some like movement next turn to get them far enough away from each other where that'll all work out. But hey, I can still use my card. So let's use Hell's Half Acre. I don't know. Let's get a yellow and a brown maybe. I can always change things later. I'm not going to change anything yet. We'll just uh, let it be what it is. All right, now going into the next turn, I got to say I'm pretty torn about who to activate next. Red <laughs> would just like descend upon this guy and clearly be uh, very close to capturing it, which is two victory points for him. But the only way blue can progress is to go right there on the brambles. And they already got a bramble victory point, so they're already at two. That would get them to three, and they'd be pretty close to their first town. So, yeah, I feel like... I feel like I activate red again. I think I gotta. Let's go for purple card, I guess. Oh, they're gonna double move. So they're gonna get the stupid thing this turn. That's great. So yeah, first they're double moving, then getting a single cube, and then uh, spawning on 35 or 36, which are these two bottom ones. Okay, okay. So double move. Mur -mur. And it does say they continue to move towards here. So I guess I'm actually gonna make that a bigger group. And then there. All right, so that gets them to three points. Jeez. And then at the start of the next turn, I'll waste another card to spawn out their new villager. It's not great. Okay, then they get one cube, and they spawn here or here. Let's put them here, and that way I can uh, try to put the new villager, like, over there near the town. And maybe they'll get in each other's way. I don't know. And they are not going to attack, because that is a four-unit stack, and they only got three in their biggest spot. But hey, coming back to my turn, I'm finally going to get a stupid bonfire, I think. <laughs> I hope. And let's see. Let's actually build out back this way. So like that, like that, I guess. Because it's a blue and a yellow. Where do I actually want the guys to meet? I guess I could have them meet on this brown spot. Uh, it does mean that they're going to be able to attack me pretty quickly. But at least getting the second bonfire gets me another action. Like, that's the, the key thing here, right? So I need a brown cube for each of them to move. Currently, I don't have that. So let's... Let's use Wild Tangle to change uh, need, uh, change one of the yellows into a brown. Then for my first action, I'll activate movement, and I'll do two moves, a brown cube each. Let's move this guy in here, and then this guy in here, and they make a happy family. I get my snakes back. These go on one spot of my choice, and that only matters because when I like eat the legends by ending my character on them. For now, whatever, we'll just go here. And I do get another card from that, which is Mud in Your Eye. The opponent with the fewest cubes in the battleground gains a cube, and then you gain a terrain cube of your choice. I already got a lot of ways to get terrain cubes. In the space that they join together, I get to take both bonfire tokens from here, which will make this for a moment a two bonfire spot. These are kind of like units in combat. They only take one cube to kill, though, so if I uh, don't defend them well, it's easy to get rid of them. But maybe most importantly, I get a bonfire from the supply, that's a second action. I get to use it immediately, and for the rest of the game, even if they kill that bonfire I placed, I'll have another action every turn. Unfortunately, this also is what goes on the little, like, solo action board, so they'll get more actions every turn, too. Yay. All right, so what do I want to do for my second action? I could play another card, um, but I think I want to get, like, my next bonfire set up so I can make it cheap enough to bring Hester out and uh, go start stealing from these legends. Although I could also defend my bonfire by doing an extra root placement. Because whenever a root goes into a space with a bonfire, you get another bonfire from the supply. So suddenly that would be three units they would have to get through. 
But remember that they only attack me. Let's show some cards when the activation card has an eight. So like the last two activations for the uh, red team would not have actually attacked my bonfire. Ah, you know what? Let's let's be greedy and go for uh, the victory. And let's get in some people's brains again. OK, so I'm going to drop my cubes. Hopefully I get a decent number. Oop, I only got two. But I got Hell's Half Acre and I am on a mountain, so I can get two more of my choice. Uh, to get the people that are closest to each other, I need a yellow and then anything else. Because <laughs> I'm going to do three to infect one of the guys on the mountain. So I'm spending all of those to snakey snake uh, one of these blue guys. And this weak little red guy hanging out right next to him. So hopefully I'll be able to get another bonfire next turn, maybe. And all right, that'll be that. Okay, now, before I do anything else, I have to spawn a new village. Remember, this is coming straight from my cards, making my life harder. I think I want a red one to hopefully get it really far away from them. Red's almost out. Um, so it's going to 17 or 21. 17's there. No. 21's there. That's eh, not as <laughs> far away as I might have hoped. Okay, now I got to decide who to actually activate. <sighs> if I activate blue... I should have infected a different person. If I activate blue, they're going to go here. I don't have to put them on the brambles. And then they will almost certainly attack them unless they attack me. <laughs> and I don't like any of that. I don't like any of that. Let's activate red again, I guess. Because at least they aren't very strong to destroy my bonfire, most likely. Although I do think they have more cubes because I've activated them so many times. <sighs> It's a tough call. It's a tough call. Yeah, I really don't want blue to kill my guy that's infected or my bonfire. Let's activate red, I guess. And we'll do another purple card. Uh, okay, they're getting... Well, actually, they're getting a few things now because they start on the queue, but we keep going clockwise now that I have uh, two actions per turn. So they're going to get two attack cubes. Brings them to three in the tray. Oh, it is not a Hester card. Yay, they can one attack me. Then they're going to spawn twice, and I can place them among hexes 24 and 27. And then they'll move once. God dang it, piece of crap. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Guess where 24 and 27 are, y'all. Guess where they are. There and there. There, where I can't place. And friggin' there. Oh my God, help me. What did... Uh, God, should I not have picked a purple? I didn't know that they would get the one... Uh, it's fine. It's fine. Because yeah, now they're moving. Hi. <laughs> gosh darn it. And uh, this guy can only go that way. And then they can go, I guess, probably either way. We'll go there. Oh, that sucks so much. They get two more points. They're at five. They're at five victory points. They haven't even attacked yet. Well, can they attack? They didn't get an H. And no, they don't have more units than him. Okay, so at least they're not getting any victory points for, like, fighting. But God, that was terrible. All right, it's fine. Shake it off. Shake it off, Mike. You're in a great position to get another bonfire. Uh, you can summon yourself, maybe. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. I see. I've got two actions. I definitely want to do movement to get the one guy into the other guy's space. Oh, I got to do my uh, my tentacles, my roots first. So maybe I go like here because um, that'll let me strengthen my bonfire. Yeah. Yeah, that seems reasonable, right? OK, so that'll give me a brown and a green. And of course, I got my ability to get two from Hell's Half Acre again. My right, first action is going to be movement, but I need a blue to get the guys together. So let's use Hell's Half Acre for that and get a blue. And then I might want to spawn on my spot. So let's get another brown for spawning Hester. OK, and then movement. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong blue. That's their blue. I definitely don't want that. <laughs> there we go. So I'm going to have this guy move here with the blue which will immediately get me a second bonfire and a third action this turn. Heck yeah. And that's another victory point for me. And this time, let's have them chill over here, try to keep things kind of balanced. I get another card. Forced Sacrifice. Place one terrain cube on any hex on the board that has no terrain cubes on it. When an uninfected haint enters this hex, add this cube to the battleground. I don't know. I could play another card, couldn't I? I mean, I definitely want to summon Hester. And with my Wild Tangle, I'll almost certainly be able to. I've got uh, browns to do it with. But then what do I want to do with my other action? It's really root or card. So I should I should do a card, shouldn't I? Or I guess I could infect some more people. But now I think I need to start eating some legends. So, yeah, let's let's play a card. And I think I want mud in your eyes. This is uh, the opponent with the fewest cubes in the battleground gains a cube. And then you gain a terrain cube of your choice. And a cool thing about that one that they clarify, like in the little FAQ or at the back of the rule book, is that uh, if they're tied, neither of them gets anything, but you still get the terrain cube. So with that in mind, before I use this, let's go ahead and drop for my final action to summon Hester and see uh, how things turn out there. Now, unfortunately, only red cubes came out. So if I do mud in your eye, blue will get a cube. But let's uh, go ahead and use it. So 
I give blue a cube because they have the fewest because I've never activated them. <laughs> and then I need another brown to bring out Hester. So that's the one I'll add. Because now that I have two bonfires out, it costs me two cubes to summon her. So let's go ahead and do that for my final action. And I have to summon her on a spot with a bonfire in those color cubes. So I'm right here. And remember, if I can move her next turn and end my turn on one of the legends, I remove Hester from the map, but I'll get another immediate victory point. Uh, that'll give me three out of six, which will not have me as close as friggin' red with their indomitability, <laughs> but it'll be something. I still have Wild Tangle to switch out a color, but... To move Hester onto a Hex next turn, I need two of the matching color. And if I don't move red next turn, if I move blue, then red will be right next to me on green, ready to eat. So yeah, let's leave those cubes. I'm not going to change their color for anything. Wait a second, didn't I? Yeah, I should have increased the uh, defense of that. Why did I forget to do it? I don't know. But don't forget now, they're going to do double of every action because <laughs> I've got three actions. So me getting stronger is not necessarily better. And yeah, I got to activate blue. But first, I got to draw another freaking card for red i don't know man uh let's go purple again purple can't be too bad can it so i gotta spawn their new villager on two or 36 okay this is better two is up whoops <laughs> where was i is there two is up here way better way better i feel good about that i can probably keep them away from there for a little bit but then yes i am absolutely 100 percent activating blue and uh that's right this doesn't matter that's just going to tell me which thing they do first because now they're doing uh one or double of every action because my three bonfires go boop 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 so yeah they're going to get two more cubes in combat which is good because they couldn't really fight red this whole time oh no but they will try to attack me that might be bad so they're summoning two among 18 and 20 and then moving twice 18 and 20 are here and here hmm wait, wait that guy was here wasn't he yeah i didn't move him off I don't know why you moved away. So that would make a super stack, and they're about to attack me. So even though 20 is one hex closer, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. And then they move twice, so these guys will go like that, I guess. And these guys can go like that. I'm sure, anything that sort of gets in Red's way. Okay, and then their first preference is to attack me, but they can't reach me. <laughs> so their second preference is to attack my new bonfire. And remember, only one cube will destroy a bonfire. So two cubes will be enough to wipe it out. And when they wipe out a bonfire, get rid of all the tokens there. Guess what they get? Another victory point. Another way for them to win. Uh. Now, luckily, they have two units and I have two bonfires. So they don't get a bonus cube. Uh, they've got three cubes in there, but I've got two. And I think I have a decent number in the tower. I don't think they have any in the tower. Come on, help me out. Help me out here. Yes. Wow, red got a lot. Um, this is great. So because they did not equal or exceed me, one versus two, they don't get to do any damage. A haint clash where uh, they can kill a haint only happens if there are haints there. My bonfires don't count. So they don't do any damage to me. Hallelujah. All right, so that takes me into my turn. I don't necessarily want to get any more actions because I'll just make them stronger. Although making more bonfires to get more people is really good. First, let's do my roots. You know, I don't need roots over here to kill, or not, so I don't kill her, but I could infect her guy, but I gotta kind of get over to blue to infect them, and then red's also kind of over there, so yeah, let's go there, there, that gets me a brown and a green, and I can use my uh, mountain power again. I don't know, what do I want to do? Hmm. So I'm definitely in a move to eat uh, the one ability token with Hester. But I think I might also want to infect a guy. So that'd be two of my three actions. So do I want to play another card? I kind of like my cards at the moment. So I think maybe I'll do a third of one of the roots. That'll give me another cube. And let's maybe go this way to uh, try to get one of them infected and then like bring them together maybe. Which gets me a yellow cube. Okay, second action will be movement. So I'm going to spend two green cubes to move Hester into a matching colored space. And she can just move into spaces with like a lot of units. She doesn't care about that kind of stuff. So at the end of the turn, she'll actually go away. I'll have to summon her again, but I'll get another uh, point towards winning. And then for my last action, let's uh, let's drop the cubes first because I'm going to infect somebody. All right. OK, red's got two and blue's got one, which means mud in your eye is going to help blue. But I'm OK with that. OK, so let's use mud in your eye, give blue a cube, then I can get one of my choice. I need a green to infect the guy. Let's get another green. And then I still have Helves half acre. Oh, let's get a blue and a brown and really try to also stock up on defense. And then yeah, for my last action, I will. Oh, I could bring out Hester again. Couldn't I actually? Ooh. Oh, no, no, that's right. She's she's still there. <laughs> she doesn't go away until the end of the turn. So I can't summon her yet. Say, so, okay, I will infest uh, the guy in the forest with the other leader right here. Okay. And then because I'm in this turn, I uh, take Hester back off the board. And I get one of these tokens on the red side. I get another card I could play. 
Lollygagger. When summoning Hester, you may use any terrain cubes of the same color to pay for the summoning cost. So that's pretty cool. This makes it a little bit easier to get me back on the map. But gosh, yeah, it's a whole... It's slow, man. <laughs> I got to take a turn to summon Hester. And then the next turn, I can move her and uh, get another point. So this is like six turns, unless I definitely need to infect and make another bonfire somewhere in here. Don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it before they get all the points they need. All right, uh, so I'm definitely moving blue because they only have two points and red has five, so I just can't risk it. Gosh, y'all, look how small these stacks are getting. This is why the easy mode has like four more cards. Makes a big difference, makes a big difference. <sighs> I don't know. Uh, let's, let's do a red for blue. Okay, so. They're going to start out with spawning. Oh, then move. Interesting. And they can spawn on 23 or 28 or 28. Looks like 28 is going to be better to kind of uh, put them all together. Yeah, here. And I also like having people together. Okay. And then they're going to all try to move here. Oh, man. Including my... Ah, snake dude. Well, I mean, I guess I'm still pretty close to the red there. It'll take quite a few cubes to get them together. And whew, it's going to be tough, y'all. All right. So they eat this. That gets them to four victory points. And they don't have an H. So... Oh. These guys can attack them or them. Let's have them let's have them attack the one where they're even, so neither of them gets a bonus, so them attacking them. And yeah, it's mostly my cubes, which is how I like it. Uh how they do Ooh, yep, they did fine. They're gonna spend both of those to kill one haint. Ooh, and that was their second one. So now they need three to score a point, but they are up to five. Both groups are at five. Not good, not good. I'll have to summon another building for them next turn. <sighs> Now it's my turn. I need <laughs> to get some more people together. Points. So let's go like here and here. Oh, well, that's right. I do infect at the end of the turn, so I can't even uh, actually make a bonfire this turn. Well, that's okay. That's okay. I got a yellow and a blue. I got a lot of those. Um, so I'm definitely going to summon Hester at the end of the turn. I'm definitely going to infect at the end of the turn. So that's two of my three actions. I don't really want to play a card. And I don't really have anybody that I need to move. So I guess it'll be another extra route. And uh, what do I want to do with this extra route? Uh, maybe, maybe head back this way and get another brown cube. Okay, and then I got to drop before I can do all the stuff. I sell all my powers too, though. So it should be fine. Um, oh my gosh. Look at all the red attack cubes and zero blue attack cubes that came out. All right, so uh, first, I want to summon Hester. Uh, I guess I might as well do it uh, next to red again. That's nice and easy. So that's uh, two brown cubes. Hey, okay, back to Ichi again. And then I also want to uh, infect all of these dudes, I think, right? And get a bonfire set up. So that's going to be a single blue and three of anything. And if I activate red next turn, they'll probably be there. So I want to keep the yellow. So let's spend all those. Get some more snake buddies over here. Ready to make another bonfire. I can get close to winning. And I still have all my powers, so sure, let's give blue another cube. And I get to give myself one. Um, I guess another yellow, and then I can also use Hell's Half Acre and get, I don't know, I just spent a lot of brown, right? So maybe like a brown and a green. Good, and get my strength back up, and I'm not going to use Wild Tangle. Which probably means I should be replacing that one, but maybe another time. All right, I'm very low on turns, even if they don't win. Um, I got to put out a blue building. Okay, I don't want to mess myself up again. So they're all over here. <sighs> I mean, I'm going to activate red this turn anyway, so it's not like the worst thing in the world. But a red should be okay, because like none of these are the worst. Okay, so this is my final red card. I can't pick red anymore. But I can place their building on 22 or 17, which is here or here. God, they're like right there, man. Ah. <laughs> okay, well, I'm certainly going to activate red. And <sighs> with which card? <sighs> so I don't want them to spawn right next to this. So I think blue's safer. Okay, so they're getting they're uh, getting attack first, then spawning, then moving. 13 or 25. So they get a ton of cubes, geez. Oh, and they are going to attack me this turn if they can. And their options are here or here. That's clearly better. We'll put them both there. Okay, and then they're all moving too. Oh, including uh, my snakey friend. Whoops, your snake fell out, buddy. We'll just leave it there because you're about to make some fun for me. Now this is good. I'll take him out. All right, this one wants to go there. This guy wants to go there. And then she, oh, she can't enter that. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I'll have her go the long way around. Oh, wait, wait, crud. Stupid building. Okay, I'll have her, no, this, yeah. That way I can still get her with the yellow. Okay. Remember, if they reach that, they win. Ooh, now blue. Ha, <laughs> this is great. If blue I have moved next, they can't make any progress at all. They're boxed in, although they'd probably end up on the brambles, wouldn't they? I don't know. 
Okay, now they want to attack me, <laughs> and they always prefer to attack Hester, which is great because she has a three strengths. It is now a six strengths place, so I'm going to definitely get the cube bonus. Who do I want to have attack? I guess it doesn't really matter because I don't think I can hurt them back anyway. So whatever, we'll just say somebody attacked me. Now I get a free cube matching my terrain. Now they do have a lot of cubes, so... I mean, to be able to kill Hester, they'd have to kill three fires. That's one cube each. And then she uh, needs two cubes to be killed. So that seems like a pretty low chance, right? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know if I love how much this came out there. Oh, crud. Uh, what is this? Five. So they're going to kill fire, 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 fridge. They don't beat me anymore, so they can't defeat Hester, but they do destroy my bonfire. So what happens? They get a victory point. That's at six for them. Yikes. And they also cover this up, so it'll be more expensive to summon Hester. Now, importantly, they do not take away my actions. Those never go away, for better or worse, since they're getting more actions, too. Okay, uh, that's, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Red is very close to winning. Uh, great. All right, so I gotta do my tentacle. If I can eat Hester and make two bonfires, I would win the game. But that's not possible, because I don't have enough dudes. <laughs> but I can definitely eat her. And I can definitely make a bonfire here. So I want to get another red infected, right? So let's uh, let's go here and then here, I guess. So that gives me two brown and a green. Now I can't actually use my uh, Hell's Half Acre to get two more cubes at the moment. That's unfortunate. Ooh, what I can do is Mud in Your Eye. They both have exactly two, so they won't get anything. I'll just get a cube of my choice. I need another yellow to move Hester. So let's get that. And then yeah, first action, let's go ahead and do movement. So Hester, I'm going to spend... Uh, two yellow to have her come in here and eat again. No, shoot, I need another yellow. So let's uh, use Wild Tangle to change one of my browns into a yellow, because then I can move this guy in here and make another bonfire. So that'll go here and get me another card. And yeah, I get to put this out there. I get a fourth action. I don't know if I want another action. <laughs> All right, so I still have, oh, no, I have three more actions. Uh, I want to infect a guy, and that's it. So I guess I'll do another uh, Brute. I already affect him. He's already infected. Uh, do I need some like redundancy maybe? Well, here, I did want to get my Hell's Half Acre. So let's go there with the extra root. All right. And then <sighs> I play a card. Tromping Ground over Tramping Ground. Move one infected Haint or Hester to an adjacent Hex that has no units or roots. Ooh, let's, uh, let's cover up the one that I'm not using as often. And now uh, I can move some Haints. Or uh, Hester. Oh, it has no units or roots. That's a little tougher than I thought. Okay, my last action will be, yeah, to uh, infect again. So I need to, to roll for that. I still got Hell's Half Acre and Tramping Ground to use. Three blue. Oh, uh, is that what I need? No, I just need a brown to infect. So I'm actually good. Okay, so I'll use Hell's Half Acre to get, I don't know, another brown and a, a yellow or something. Yeah, for my last action, I will infect with one brown. Uh, this dude right here, because if I can get those two friends together, I'll win the game. I think I might make it. I think I might make it. Now, I could also infect that guy, but no, I want to keep more strength cubes in case they attack me or anything crazy. Now, I could use Tramping Ground to move that dude to there, uh, which, yeah, might actually be good, because then I won't have to move him away from the other guy. See, I'll use Tramping Ground. I can move an Infected Haint to an adjacent hex that has no units or roots. Perfect. Because then when I activate blue, which is what I'm going to do, they will they should move here. And then I'll be right next. Yeah, this is great. This is great. This is great. Okay, so uh, turn ends. Um, and look, give me your essence again. Should be the last time I need to summon Hester. I got her soul. So I'm done on red side. I just need to get this last blue side. But they're going to get a lot of actions. They're going to do three of one thing and two of everything else. But yeah, I got to activate blue because red has done me this extreme favor of <laughs> blocking up their path completely, which is great. I have three cards left. I don't know. Let's do a purple. Okay. Oh, God, they're going to move three times. Am I still okay? I think I'm still okay. I, th I think I am. <laughs> uh, we'll see. But they will move before spawning, so the spawn can't kill me. Two and three. Oh, that's good. There's stuff in both those hexes, but there won't be after they move, because I would have had to draw another card, so perfect. Okay, so they move three times. This guy's fastest way is around there. The guy I possess is going to go one, two, three, because I'm blocking them. Uh, they're gonna go one, two, three. Gosh darn it. Am I not gonna be able to move them together? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be so frustrating if that happens. What am I gonna do? Well, I could like move the red up there and then the blue twice. I just need to have enough cubes to do it. Okay, then blue's getting two cubes and they're summoning twice again on two or three. We'll put them there. And now they're going to attack. They didn't have an H. 
uh, which is cool because <laughs> one, oh no, they would not have won from one victory point. Uh, so they want to attack somebody. Now, if I attack the guy that's infected, you always kill infected last. <laughs> but if they get enough cubes to kill two people, that'd be bad. So let's have these guys attack this loner. Yes. So they do get a free cube for outnumbering them. Okay. And red got four. So did they. So they can spend two and kill the guy. All right. But they've done a lot of killing, so they would need two more Hanes to get to their sixth victory point. I think we're good, y'all. I think we're good. Because all I need to do is... All I need to do is, is move. Is move a lot. <laughs> um, okay. So I need to put me down my roots. I need to put down my roots. Um, and I want to get out of the way, but also be able to use... Here, let's go in and boost one of my fires. And then go in there. And that gets me brown, yellow, and I can use Hell's Half Acre. And yeah, it should be all she wrote. This should be it. Because here, I can put another thing down first. Just get more cubes. I need a lot of green, right? Yeah, they're going to be moving through green a ton. So there we go. Then I'm going to use Tramping Ground to move him here. Then I'll take the movement action. I'll move this guy there. And then I'll move him again. And they're best friends. And we win, <laughs> which is great. Because, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I could have survived one more round, really, right? Red could have definitely gotten to their person. Uh, or maybe they couldn't have, actually, because now if I'd put a bonfire right here, then they wouldn't have had at any pass to get there. So I could have actually activated red. The problem, though, was cards. I only had one more turn, so I think you lose. I think uh, no, I think it's at the end of the turn where you draw the last cards. I might have had two more turns, so okay. I still couldn't have won on a hard difficulty where I would have had way fewer cards and started with fewer cubes. But I got it on normal. I made it happen. That's great. So let's talk about Harrow County. What do I think about it? So here is the big thing first. Here is the main thing. The other factions in the competitive play, they're so friggin' cool, y'all. I've been playing this game a lot with my 11-year-old, my most common competitive partner, and it is fun to mix and match them. They play very differently. They get these ability tokens to level up their actions and stuff. They have this uh, cool interplay where they're picking actions and there's like these bonus tiles between them. So whoever picks an action first gets a little bonus for it. So it, it really makes like the complexities of how you pick your actions each turn really interesting. And Hester, the faction that you have to play in solo, is actually the weird one because this is the only way to play three player. You have two players sort of playing like the real factions head to head. And then Hester's chilling around, like stealing their brains and trying to be the uh, <laughs> the spoiler in the mix. So it is very interesting that solo is the Hester play because actually I would never played this faction until I played solo <laughs> because I haven't played three player yet. So yeah, I think this game, just to say right off the bat, if you're looking for a cool competitive game with uh, asymmetric factions, not as heavy as something like Root, like way simpler than something like Root, but really cool. Like, I, I think it's definitely a keeper for my collection. Me and my kid really enjoy it. It is just really fun to play kind of like this area control, like tight thing. The game is super fast, faster even than solo. I think our uh, 1v1 games have been like 30, 40 minutes. It's really cool. And hey, the little cube tower combat thing, I love that. I loved it in Wallenstein and Shogun, like I said. I love it here. It's just fun because even when you lose, you're like, man, my cubes didn't come out. You know they're waiting. You know it's like a sort of Damocles over your opponent's head, just going to crush them down. I love that. Now, how about the solo mode? I'll be 100% honest. I didn't think this was going to be good. The rule book is a little bit rough. They're actually, uh, they sent me a draft of this. They're making a new solo rule book that is just solo and basically explains how to play Hester completely. Because how it is currently is you have to like go read the Hester rules and then go read the solo rules on top of that. And you kind of got to understand like some of the basic competitive rules too. So it's just sort of a lot. Uh, if I had not played competitive first, I would have found it very challenging. The new solo rule book is going to make it a billion times easier. But yeah, I, I thought this would be boring. I was like, why am I playing the weirdest faction? Why am I like not really doing things with the other factions? There's not enough variety. But it is a really cool puzzle. Like I think you saw, I hope you saw, there's a lot of variety in uh, the power cards you get. There's some very tactical positioning. Like, I didn't really do this well enough, but you saw, like, how people were blocking each other up. Like, I could have, instead of having my infected people just form, uh, you know, bonfires right away, I could have moved them to block the other player and then activated that player just to, like, have them sort of waste movement trying to get around because uh, units can't occupy the same space as their enemies. So there's, like, a lot of tactical depth here, more than I realized would be there. And I've really enjoyed it. And, and it's it's tense, you know? I mean, that was a really close game and deciding which cards to use and which faction to activate and trying to minimize your damage. It's a fun spin on solo play in general. Now, 
Would I recommend you get this just for solo? I don't know. So much of the beauty of this game is in these uh, competitive factions. And you're playing with the same two each time. I, I think... I think it might be a f an expansion, but I don't know if it changes up the solo play. I don't think it does. You always play these uh, two factions, the family and the protectors, and they aren't like really like themselves. They're just kind of moving in a basic way. They're identical to each other. So certainly you're missing a lot of the joy and beauty of the design with just the solo mode. But I still had a blast with it. So yeah, I don't know. If you can find this for like cheaper, maybe get it for just solo. But man, if you like solo games and you think you might play it at least once or twice, uh, two player or three player, Harrow County is great. I mean, I gotta say real quick, I'm just really impressed with off the page games. Like they have, the only games I've played of theirs are this one, Harrow County, an upcoming one called Core of Discoveries, which is Friggin' great. I'll have a preview of that. I love that game from what I've played so far. And then they also did Mind Management, which was a really cool uh, competitive, you know, a hidden deduction like movement game. But then also had like a really neat app enabled solo co-op mode. So they are they are bad enough. A thousand for me. I don't know. I've, I've, maybe they have some other games I haven't played. But of the three that I've played, heck yeah, you're doing it. So anyway, that's Harrow County. Uh, really cool game. Pretty good for solo. I uh, hope you enjoyed. And thanks for watching. I'll see you at the next stop.